and uh, we'll be rocking and rolling. Ladies and gentlemen, so happy to have uh, this next guest on the show. He is a member of the awesome Fortis MMA team out of Houston, Texas, under the amazing uh, leadership of head coach Saif Saud. We're talking about the man they call Chapo, Miles Johns. Welcome to the show, Miles. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. How you doing? Doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Man, heard so many good. cool. Heard so many great things about you even before you won at Dana White's Contender Series and before you won your UFD, uh, UFC debut. Man, heard you were an absolute Thank killer. You. Yeah, you're welcome, and an amazing fighter, man. So, uh, speaking about fighting, let us know you have a fight coming up. Shout out uh, the uh, date and the venue and uh, your opponent if you'd like, and uh, we'll take it from there. Yeah, it's February 8th in uh, Houston, Texas, on UFC 247. I'm fighting Mario Bautista, who um, he's just a game opponent, man. He's I've he we're both come from LFA. I've seen his fights before. Um, I was kind of watching him coming up. He was an undefeated guy. Um, came into the UFC a little early at five and zero against Corey Sanhagen. A tough fight, lost that one, and then he's coming off a fight of the night, a fight of the night win where it was just um, it was a great fight, man. It was just a war. These two dudes just went out there and threw down. So I'm real excited for this fight. Um, he brings a different approach than some of the other fights I've had. Um, Address, brings different problems so I'm, I'm just excited for this one man i think it's gonna be it's gonna be a barn burner so it's a it's a fan-friendly fight for sure absolutely that's that last couple words are the words that i would have used man so you're you're hitting right yeah. where i would have hit man right on point you know with that description and that's going to be in the bantamweight division right yes sir yep Fantastic. 35, you know, those guys moving around. They're oh, flying man. all over the cage. Oh, so super exciting. expect a lot of action. Oh, man, <laughs> without a doubt. Without a doubt, that's going to be fantastic. Can't wait to see that. And, uh, you know, you uh, are right there in Houston where uh, Fortis is located. So I, I will bet you probably almost, if not your entire team, is probably going to be there. And uh, it makes, yep. makes it a lot easier. And uh, now you yourself are not from Houston. I think you're from uh, somewhere else. Let us know where that is. Yep, Kansas, born and raised. Um, I grew up there my whole life in Newton, Kansas, until I went to college pretty much 30 minutes away from my hometown. And then a year after that, when I started my fighting career, uh, that's when I packed it up and moved to Dallas. And I've been here for about six years now. Fantastic. That's it, Dallas. I'm sorry. I know that the fight is in Houston, but you guys in Fortis are Dallas. Aren't yeah. You? But, still but I mean, but it's still just a short drive. So I know I got a lot of teammates and a lot of support coming down. And I mean, it's a little better than going to Vancouver. Vancouver was a great experience, but I'm looking forward to being able to fight a little closer to home without a doubt are you gonna be able to have some of your people from kansas stop by yeah a lot of them say they're coming i think a couple of people are renting like, like some 15 passenger vans and stuff so i'm getting a ton of love and support and um i really appreciate it and i plan to go out there and definitely leave everything i have in the octagon for those people coming excellent excellent and uh i think it's going to be a great turnout for you man will that will that put any more pressure on you in a negative way having all that support there or is it all positive or is it something that you just don't kind of put your mind on and it's the same as any other fight it's positive man like i mean in the fight camp like when i'm getting all the support and people are so excited for it i love that man it just it just makes me grind even harder i've loved that my whole life you know um so during the fight camp, it's like that. And then fight day, I mean, I, I, I think about it a little bit. Like, you know, I'm lead, there's so many people I'm doing this for, mainly myself. You know, I'm, I'm mainly doing this for myself, so I just focus in on what I need to do and how I can be the best miles. But knowing that I got these other people supporting me and putting their faith in me and all that, that, that gives me a little extra feel as well. You know, I, I don't forget about that. And, um, and, yeah, it pushes me. Very cool. And it's funny how when a fighter walks down that long aisle from the dressing room, you know, you'll sometimes see fighters grab someone, not grab, but reach out and, and hug someone in the audience or touch them or, or, you know, shake hands or whatever. And I think some people think it's just random people, but I think it's usually people's friends and family <laughs> that are in the audience that the fighter yeah. is reaching yeah. out to. It's not random people, you know, so that'll be yeah. cool. I'm it's sure funny. You, yeah. My last fight, I was so in the zone. Like, I think about it during fight day, but on the wall, I got out so in the zone. My dad had, like, he was down in the very front. And um, he was reaching his hand out and stuff, and I didn't even see him on oh. my way out. I was just tunnel vision on the octagon, so I missed him. I felt a little bad for that. So um, we'll see what happens this time. I, I said no promises. You know, I don't know how in the zone I'll be, but, but if I see you and I, I notice it, I'll give you – I'll show you some love. So. Absolutely. I'm sure they <laughs> understand. I'm sure they understand yeah. your dad for sure. So you got that uh, that nickname, Chapo. Tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on with that and, and, and you know. And, and, yeah, a yeah. lot of people get that confused, and they think it's related to El Chapo. It has uh, no correlation to El Chapo. It actually means shorty in Spanish, and um, 
might be hard to believe, but I've been a little bit short my entire life. So uh-huh. I got that nickname when I was in like first grade, actually. And it's just stuck with me all. I started just as a family thing. Um, my grandmas, my mom, of course, aunts, everybody called me Chapo. Then it moved on a little bit to high school and stuff. And it's just been my nickname forever. So I made it into my fight name. Very cool. Sounds good. Tell us a little bit about your background, uh, Miles. You know, I know you're 25 now. And, uh, mm-hmm. and so let's go back to maybe high school. Usually when someone's 14, 15, they're ne- not necessarily on the track to be a professional fighter, but they may be involved in combat sports of some kind. Tell us what you were involved in uh, as far as sports and, and combat sports, and then maybe some of the high points about how you got from, from you know, 10 years ago uh, to where you are now as a professional fighter in the UFC. Yeah, um, I've wrestled my whole life. I started in third grade and just absolutely loved it. My grandpa got me into wrestling, and um, yeah, I fell in love with it. I've just always loved combat, though. I remember I used to have sleepovers where it'd be like 20 guys staying, uh, staying the night in my house up all night usually, and we used to always have like little boxing tournaments. It was almost like we everybody, like a rite of passage was you had to uh, box somebody uh, your size. So I've just always just been drawn to combat, and I didn't know I was going to be a professional fighter when I grew up. I thought maybe it'd be wrestling, but I knew it was going to be something. I knew I wanted to be on the stage, compete in a, in a one-on-one type of situation with somebody. And then um, in high, I, I wrestled in, I, I was a state champion in high school my senior year. And then I went to college in Newman University and I wrestled one year there. And I ended up getting injured during that um, season. And I had, a, I had a little bit of struggle in there because my heart just wasn't in wrestling like it's always been. I'm a very disciplined guy. When I, when I want to do something, I do it all the way in. Um, and I just, well, I just didn't have that feeling I did in high school for wrestling. So that kind of got me into MMA. Um, one of my friends was like, Hey, you said you want to fight a little bit. You want to take a fight on in three weeks. And I was like, yeah, I did it and knocked that guy out and pretty quickly 13 seconds. And I just fell in love from there. And I just, um, I could have came back to wrestling after my injury the next season, but I just had to put it. I just knew I had to go with this. Like I felt that fire again. And it was, um, there was, there was no other option for me really. I had to go all the way in and I'm happy that I did now. And then, um, so I did some amateur fights in Kansas and I actually came to visit my now wife, then girlfriend in Dallas. And I was training for an amateur fight. And it just so happened that our house was really close to the gym, Octagon MMA, where Coach Safe was at. And I went to go see him and he's like, listen, if this is what you want to do, if you want to be a UFC champion, you need to drop what you're doing there and you need to move down here and we'll make that happen. And I was like, man, like, I, I mean, when you meet Coach Safe, you can just know that he's a serious dude. He's not one of these guys just blowing smoke or anything. And then, of course, I trained that night with all the guys, Damon, Clayton Mai, Eli Chimez, Stephen Peterson, all those guys been there. George Pecoraro been there for so long and was just getting my butt kicked. I was like, yeah, this is, uh, this is legit. So uh, shortly after, I made the move and never looked back, you know. And um, it was a little bit me and my girlfriend, we were really – we were really strong at that point, but it was still a little bit early for us to be uh, moving together, but we took the risk with that too, and it worked out perfect, and now we're married and have two beautiful boys, and I'm here still training under Coach Safe, and man, it's just worked out really great. I just thank God for all the blessings. That's awesome. That's a great story, man, and uh, and it's good that you do appreciate that because not everything does work out as well as it did for you for so many people and so many relationships, yeah. you know, so that's awesome. And I know it was Octagon MMA before it was Fortis, and, and it's been right. Fortis for what, two years now, three years now? Two years, that's right. Nice, yep. and so a lot of amazing people there, and, uh, you know, that you know that's a, that's a great story. So, um the uh the, the your wrestling wrestling was your biggest background but you have learned everything there what was your record as an amateur as an amateur is five and one gotcha i won that first fight in 13 seconds and then that's when i was like oh man i'm gonna be the best in the world this is gonna be easy right and then my next fight i fought a pretty experienced guy and i knew pretty much nothing i mean i'd been training for like six weeks at that time and he just got me in a i was winning the first round and he ended up getting me in a head and arm choke at the end kind of yep. um swept me and got me in the head and arm and I just didn't know how to get out of it. So I just yeah. kind of laid there and, uh, I didn't tap, but the rest of it, I was going out. Yep. And so he, he stopped it right there. So then that was a whole, that was another test right there. I just gave up pretty much wrestling and everything to do this. And the next fight I get, uh, finished in the first round. It's the only fight I've ever lost. So it was a learning lesson and it was a test. Like, let's see, let's see how bad you really want it when it's not as easy as you think it's going to be. And, uh, and then I won four fights after that or yeah, four fights after that. And then, when I came to Fortis, I thought I was going to just keep fighting amateur and go pro pretty quick. But Coach Safe made me actually stop fighting amateur and said I wasn't going to turn pro for at least one year. And all I needed to do was show up 
and let him take care of everything else. Well, it ended up being a year and a half of me just showing up, grinding, working hard, and eventually I was able to go pro, and then um, and then it's all it was all up from there. Absolutely, and how much up, ladies and gentlemen, is ten and O as a pro? So <laughs> the man was five and one as an amateur, ten and O as a pro. If you look at the pro as the real record that counts, he's undefeated. If you add the amateur, then he's fifteen and one, which is amazing. And having spent that time, that extra year and a half, which is uh, Kudos to you for having the patience to do that and listen to Coach Safe because he's amazing. We've had man, that was that was time. tough. I was used to competing all the time as yeah. a wrestler. You just try to compete all the time, but I really trusted Coach Safe. I knew he had my best interest, and I knew how legit his guys were and how legit he was. So I just trusted him and uh, worked hard, and now I'm here. And that's why I tell everybody new that comes to the gym that wants to do this. You know, they're like, man, what's it take? How do I get there? I say, just show up. Just be quiet and show up, and and you'll get there. Very good words, wise words, and important words for anyone watching that is an up-and-coming fighter or wants to be one. Uh, the great thing as well for you, man, is that is that you were so young already that I think probably Safe uh, saw that you had that time uh, to do that. Not that he wouldn't recommend that to someone 27 or 28, probably wouldn't recommend yeah. to someone 33, but the fact that right. you were able to do that put all this experience uh, under your belt and you're still just 25 years old man so you've got to feel good about the position you're in yes sir that was that was a huge part of it as well and uh and just since i mean safe has been with me every single pro fight i've had you know he's really molded me we've been through fights where we had to we knew we weren't very strong in this area so let's work this and we weren't very strong in that area against this guy so let's do this and now we finally feel like we can just beat everybody in any position so um, we, we just really know each other and he, he knows me very well as a fighter. So yeah, it's just, it's just worked out great. And, um, like I said, I'm very grateful for it. And I plan to keep working harder to keep making things work out great. Absolutely. Well, this year, I think you guys were like 19 and five. I was there at UFC 245. Man. Yeah. And saw, saw coach yeah. safe there and man, it was just great. I mean that Jeff, Jeff Neal coming through with that was great. I know he's a training partner of you and, 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 and such a nice guy. Yes, I think that, that, that safe has uh, coach safe has surrounded himself with uh, uh, young men and women that have a good attitude and have respect. Cause I was telling Jeff, uh, uh, you know, that it's like you guys are almost are to the person that I've met. And we've had Jeff on the show. We've had Safe himself. We've had Steven Peterson. We've had Macy Chess on. We've had Kennedy Nishwoku. I know I blew that name, but he understands. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, we've had Bea Malecki um, and, uh, and Alex Morono. And you guys are just all friendly, respectful uh you know people and and i think that that's a, a great thing about your team it's just universal that it's not just you guys are hard-working winners you guys are, are respectful nice good people and that makes a difference yes sir it makes it's it the only way to really survive in the gym yeah you know because there's no egos in there uh coach safe just tells us the truth you know like if you're doing good one day he's gonna let you know but if you're getting your butt kicked the next day he's gonna let you know if you suck in this area but get in that area he's, he's just gonna let you know there's no lying there's no egos everybody's just there to work hard so if you have that ego and you have that little bit of hate or jealousy in your heart you're just eventually going to get weeded out and you're not going to be able to handle it so yep. um just by having those expectations and just by just doing genuine honest hard work it's weeded out all the people that aren't aren't there with their character you know and it's it's built a team that works for each other we're all working together i mean in the mornings at our strength conditioning all the pro guys are going there and we're all grinding together and then at practices we're all grinding together nobody gets special treatment i mean jeff neal just won probably one of the biggest fights the gym has won i mean carlos won some big fights he's riding out with us won some big fights That's but right. that was a huge fight and he did it in a spectacular fashion and he's right back in the gym you know we give him a we give him a nice little clap we let him know how proud we are of him and then we move on you know nobody's getting special treatment and all this stuff um due to their levels. So we just, uh, Coach Safe has done a real good job keeping that, keeping that um, level of level of character and everybody just follows suit with it, you know. And we got a new guy, uh, actually a, a married couple, Cheyenne and JP, that came uh, to the gym and we already knew right from the jump on how they didn't have an ego. They're, they're very skilled, both of them very skilled, but just there to work hard and they fit in perfectly. Like, you know, if you, if you have that good character, you'll fit in in the work ethic. Absolutely. Um, but if you don't, get weeded out so absolutely and and i like the fact that uh that uh coach safe has embraced our show as well and, and as bringing people yeah. on and we're happy to embrace you guys because i think we're all birds of a feather there that's something that's really important to me you know my dad grew up one of the poorest kids on his block probably in his whole city 
and he mm -hmm. you know he taught us to work for everything that we get to expect to work for everything we get but also to be someone with integrity to be someone who people can count on to have respect for them to speak yes, respectfully sir. right and to be humble and to be uh you know let people know that you appreciate them and, and to spread the love in a positive way like i say at the end of every show so i think uh, i think that is we're, awesome yeah we're a good fit and we love uh making sure that we embrace you guys because uh you know we're all on the same page uh clearly yeah yes sir Down, so, your dad sounds like a great guy thank you thank you <laughs> his son well thank you yeah. god bless him he's up in heaven now unfortunately he passed but he's watching over us all and uh you know so i appreciate the good words i know he would as well so uh yes, thanks so let me ask you miles uh your first ufc fight they did put you up against a tough guy you did beat him was there was there a little bit of an adrenaline dump, as they call it there, when you got out there and saw those bright lights there? I know you had been on Dana White's Contender Series, but the actual UFC is a little bit different. Some say it's kind of the same feel, but where now that it's done and it's past you and you won, how much did that affect you? Was that was that a big real thing that that you could say was like, man, I, you were only at 80% or 60% of, of yourself because of that? Or were you at 100% or how did that affect you, if at all, may I ask? You know, I, I grow and I learn from every fight. The Contender Series fight, I actually felt a little bit more of an adrenaline dump. Um, I let, I got so excited before, um, you know, as Dana White Contender Series, I, really, I was ready to go out there and just and just kill, you know, and I got a little bit too excited. I threw a little bit too much power trying to hit him too hard. And I felt that little bit of adrenaline dump there. So we worked on that. And then I feel like in my UFC debut, I was almost a little bit too relaxed. You know, there was a little bit of nerves. I knew it was a, it was a big stage and stuff, but I was calm, man. I, I was calm. I was confident and almost to the point where I was too calm, you know, and I let some of the time slip by and I told my coach in the corner, you know, this fight's flying by. Uh, Cause in the first round, he was kind of holding me on the cage and jumping on my back. He was a real long, uh, lengthy grappler. And I was just kind of relaxed doing my job and stuff, but there could have been even a little bit more um, urgency, you know? So every, every fight I'm growing, I still feel like people have only seen no more than 75% of my best, you know, at moments. And um, it's just finding that balance. You know, I'm, I'm a very explosive guy, very strong guy. I like to go out there and go full force and uh, try to take people's heads off, but it's finding that balance of doing that and at the same time, just being relaxed and not putting everything in there and all the things. So, um, the 15 minutes in the octagon for my debut was a ton of experience. And I think it's really good to show the next fight and the following fights. Absolutely. There's an old saying that the third time is a charm. And I think if you look at the Dana White's contender series, yeah. right, where you were too, uh, uh, over, uh, overzealous and anxious and overeager and then the your de debut where you were a little bit too relaxed i think this should be the opportunity from the experience you've had for you to go in there and be your best and uh, i have a feeling that's exactly what you're going to do and uh you know should make for a super exciting fight man well hey i know you were kind enough to a degree to jump into our uh, super popular pros pick segment and i had that listed somewhere here and i put this down let me see if i can find where i have there we go i've just found where we had it and so i'm going to jump in here and let's see which one we'll start out with ladies and gentlemen bear with let's me for a second i appreciate it miles and i will find no this out here thank you and let me see let's go down that list and let's see if we can find it perfect. Why don't we start out with um, da, 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 the fight uh, this weekend? Uh, Frankie Edgar, the veteran, the man they call the answer, uh, former uh, two-time lightweight champion and numerous time featherweight contender here in the featherweight uh, division. He's going up against uh, the Korean zombie, Chan Sun Jung. Uh, I believe... I believe the zombie's last fight was uh do you do you remember Miles was his last fight that fight he lost with that with that crazy upward elbow uh No, that was uh, yeah, a year after that he fought uh Moicano. That's who's right. A dangerous dangerous uh striker. Yeah, but he caught him with that jab. I think he dropped him with the jab. Yeah, he started Yeah, that was yeah. that was crazy. That was unexpected. He just started. That, that was crazy. I was not expecting that at all. No, no. Was, and so 
Yeah. So this is uh, this is interesting. Frankie Edgar coming here at last second, probably only got a two week training camp. Hopefully he was already training. The man is a machine, though. I'm sure he was in shape. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so give me give me maybe a minute or, or a minute and a half breakdown or so on how you think that fight will play out and what are some of the key uh, factors in this matchup and also how much of a factor it might be that it's a short notice for a fight for Frankie, if at all. Oh, one second, my lights turned off on me here. Got it. No problem at all. No problem. So while you're turning that back, there we go. Perfect. All right. Sorry yeah. about that. Not a um, problem. Not a problem. And also, let me know if the last second uh, notice for Frankie might also affect uh, uh, the zombie as well, because the last second opponent change. No one's just like Frankie, and Brian Ortega really doesn't have too much uh, similar to Frankie, maybe save for grappling. But yeah, let, let me know uh, how you think the fight would unfold and how the, the kind of last second shakeup in opponents would affect both uh, competitors. I think that it's going to definitely affect both of them. You know, I think that Frankie stays in super good shape. So I don't think that two weeks' notice is going to be that hard for him cardio wise and i but i think korean zombies gonna have to deal with a little bit uh different thing as well you know with frankie he can come in a little bit he can take some damage but he also is really good at level changing and moving and getting inside and not taking too much damage so i think that's gonna be the key for him here is to be able to work his way inside stay away from the zombie stuff he's a dangerous dangerous striker i think frankie can strike with him but i think he'll want to just avoid a lot of the wild exchanges and if he gets him to the ground and on top, Frankie's ground game is just uh, is just impeccable. So I think if he gets it there, he'll control the fight and he'll come out with the win. Gotcha. And uh, I wonder who's favored in that one. I, it's probably pretty close, wouldn't you imagine? I think it is pretty close. I think I think the zombies favored it a little bit, but um, I could be wrong there. I think I, I think it's close. But yeah. So you're thinking for the upset here with Frankie. I think you could be right as well. He's such an inspirational guy, man. I, I know that uh, Uri Uriah Faber just fought, uh, you know, and uh, and he's 40 in a bantamweight. I think he's maybe two years older than Frankie and also one weight division lighter. He gave it a hell of a try against uh, tough Peter Jan. Didn't come go his way. I think that Edgar has more of a chance here, and I think he will do well. I hope so, at least. Let's jump into the next one, and we have uh, the big men coming up in a few couple of weeks, two or three, I think. Curtis Blades, a man we had on the show, the Razor, and uh, he is going up against uh, the former heavyweight champion, the man they called JDS Junior Dos Santos. Let me know how you feel that one's going to unfold. You know, I mean, with heavyweights, it's so like, I mean, it could be either one. You know, it's always it's always kind of up in there with that because one one shot can end it all. But I think Curtis Blades is kind of hitting his stride. You know, I think he's um, trying to make his title run right now, and I think if he fights smart and stays away from the big power shots of JDS that he can get that W. I mean, JDS is always going to be in the fight. He's going to be dangerous as long as, um, as long as his lights are still on. So JDS could definitely get that one. I'm kind of, I'm kind of back and forth on that, but I could see Curtis blades kind of grinding out, getting in, get him on the fence, get him on the ground a little bit, hit him with some shots inside and, um, and grinding that one out. Yeah. I agree. Both are really, really nice guys. A lot of times I cheer for the older guy. I like Junior Dos Santos a lot. I don't know him personally. I've had a great chat and an interview with Curtis, and he's a he's a very, very respectful, nice uh, young man. And uh, you know, like yourself and you guys from Fortis, and so I'll, I I think probably I'm thinking that Curtis can take that, and he's hungrier and younger and fresher. His wrestling is really good. I mean, Curtis is right there on the uh on the the cusp of being considered next uh for a title fight and uh with this win he yeah. may indeed be that way so i agree with that all right and then we have we got two more how about uh uh your training partner one of them uh, carlos uh, diego ferreira uh against uh anthony pettis and obviously i know you're you bias on this one because it is your training partner but you know, yeah he's, he's i'm amazing. definitely a little biased on that one but i mean even even realistically trying to step out of the bias, I think that's a good fight for Carlos. You know, I think uh, stylistically, he's going to bring a lot of problems to Anthony Pettis. And um, Carlos is just a dog, man. You saw him in his last fight against Tyson Moff. Like, I mean, he's he's just a beast, and he, he doesn't care, you know. And he's another one that's hitting his stride. He's really experienced now. I think he has eight fights in the UFC. Um, I think it was the second one was his only loss to Dustin Poirier 
or he got um, caught with that uppercut. But since then, it's just been all up for him, you know, and he's been winning some hard fights, not easy fights. So um, I think he's hitting his stride, and um, I think it's going to be a good night for Carlos. I think so, too. I've picked Carlos also, and sure dog for people that are looking him up, they have him as Diego Ferreira, but it's Carlos Diego. Uh, I All year, and I think most of last year, I picked him to win his fights. I was so impressed with what he did in 2017 and 18 that in early 18 that's you know for last year and a half I've, I've picked him no matter who he's fought and he's frequently been the underdog my my producer and co-host here dr adam Rorter, remembers me saying that this guy is a beast uh, carlos diego Ferreira. Yeah. and uh, i mean he just you know, ties him off and nobody wants to stand up and trade with and carlos is a high high level black belt in jiu-jitsu and he just stood up and just took that fight from him you know like he just it was it was on the feet pretty much the entire time. I think the entire time, and yeah. uh, that's like I said, Tyson Moff is a very dangerous striker, and Carlos Carlos outstruck him and just took the fight. So yeah. Um, it's, yeah, we'll see what happens on the it, He's impressive. I think I remember when I first cheered yes. for him, he had come back from like two or three years off and right away was competitive and sharp. And so he's a great talent, without a doubt. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, the main event, and and we've got maybe about six or seven minutes left uh, in the interview. So if you want to give me two or three minutes uh, on this, uh, love to hear your breakdown of uh, Conor McGregor going against Donald Cowboy Cerrone. If you have a couple of different ways that you think this will unfold, let me know. Our last guest is a former training partner of Cowboys, and he actually gave a couple different ways that he thought the fight could unfold. So if you'd like to do that and maybe point out some interesting factors that that you think could be helpful to the fans watching uh, about these two fighters, that would be great. And then a prediction if you have one. You know, that's a that's a real interesting fight. I think some people are kind of counting Cowboy out of that fight for some reason, but you can't count Cowboy out of that fight. I mean, he is coming off of two losses um, to Tony Ferguson and then um, to Gaethje. So, those, I mean, those are two super tough guys that, I mean, it's debatable if Connor could beat them. And before that, though, he was really hitting a stride. After his son was born and stuff, he maybe had a four-fight win streak, and people were talking about he's going to be the next champ and this and that and one of the greatest, and he is, you know. And um, I think Connor is going to have to come out and be that Connor that people remember to, to win this fight. He's going to have to be really hungry in this training camp, and he's just going to have to everything else – in his life that's happened since he's last been in the octagons got to go to the side and he, if he comes out and is that connor it's a tough fight i mean it's still it's still a tough fight nate diaz and him were real close and cowboys cowboy striking is is good you know it's it's real good i think connor could always clip him with that left i mean um super fast super clean left that really does sit people down but um I don't know, man. It's, it's been a long layoff for Connor, and uh, Cowboy's been real active. So that also plays. That also has a factor into it. Cowboy's ground game is better. I don't. I don't really see him going for that many takedowns um, in this fight. He might. You know, whatever happens, he, he could. But I see it kind of being a stand up, um, stand up fight. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who really. I've, part of me wants to kind of lean towards Cowboy just because all how long Connor's been out and stuff. And I don't know if he if he has that fire that he used to have, but we'll see what happens. It's going to be an interesting night. It really will. It really will. I think that Connor is definitely the younger, fresher fighter, uh, probably by a lot. He's, he's more accurate fighter. His chin is probably, you know, stronger at this point than Cowboys, but Cowboy is such a gritty, tough, determined veteran. Uh, Cowboys grappling as far as jujitsu is a lot better. He's not a superb wrestler or anything, but he's probably more of a wrestler than Connor. You know, my thinking is maybe Connor catches him just by being younger and faster. Uh, but if Cowboy does try to throw in some dirty boxing and, and, you know, try to, you know, grapple with him and grind him against the cage and whatever he can do, that would be a good idea. I think most people feel that Cowboy's not going to do that uh, because he likes to throw down and and have an exciting fight. But I am glad that after a lot of years, because Cowboy's got to be 37, 38 years old or something, and for him finally to have a really good payday, man, I like when I see that happen. You know, someone pay your dues. Not that I wouldn't like to see you have a million-dollar payday next year, but I think you understand, right, that you're 25. It's okay if you pay your dues. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cowboys made some. Cowboys made some money in the game for sure. I mean, he's he's doing a lot of things. You see him on the endorsements. That's and all true. That. I mean, he's That's a, true. He's yeah. a huge star, but this will be his biggest one night paycheck, I think. 
But I mean, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Cowboy stand up with who do you fight? Um, Al Quinta. I yeah. mean, yeah. that was if he puts that type of pace on him and that pressure and that accuracy. Oh, that's a tough. That's a tough thing for Connor to deal with. I think, but we'll see. I like Connor a lot too. So yeah. Were you surprised um, that this fight was uh, is at one seventy instead of fifty five, or does that make sense to you? And which one of the fighters do you think that favors? I am a little bit surprised. I think that leans more towards Cowboy. I think Cowboy is a bigger guy. And uh, if it was in 155, I think it just shows a little bit more focus from Connor getting down back to that weight. In 170, you can be a little more lax with your diet and stuff. Um, but hey, I don't know what Connor's doing. Um, I can't speak for him. You know, he, he might be laser focused right now, but I think the weight definitely kind of leans more in Cowboy's favor. Absolutely. It's going to be an amazing fight. Last quick one I just wanted to throw in. In your division, uh, Marlon Marias against Jose Aldo. Give me a few seconds on your thoughts on that fight. Did you think it was dead even or Marias won? How did you think Marias looked and how did you think Aldo looked? Man, it was it was a super close fight. Both those guys are beasts. I kind of thought that Aldo won, but I haven't watched the fight twice. You know, it's hard for me to ever speak after only watching a fight once, right. which is crazy to say for the judge's job. And, you know, there's only three of them. Um, who sometimes don't have experience in martial arts. Um, but, you know, you really got to look at things. But either way, it was a super close fight. It could have gone either way. I think they both look good. Jose Aldo looked surprisingly well for how he looked in the weight cut. And um, it's going to be interesting to see what he does from here. And Marlon Moraes, I mean, he's he's a problem yeah. uh, for anybody, you know. So, um, so he has a bright future, too, and we'll see what he does. Without a doubt, it's funny. I... Say that again, I'm sorry. He seemed more composed in when uh, in the Cejudo fight. I think he he kind of blew his gas tank a little bit in the Cejudo fight, but Cejudo also has like superhuman mental strength and just took that fight. But um, he seemed he seemed like he learned a lot from the Cejudo. Yeah, he really did. He was really really composed. I agree, and I think we may have lost Miles there. Uh, and hopefully we can get him back. Let's see if we can, so we can properly wrap it up. The doctor is attempting some surgery here. There you go, Miles. We lost you for a second, but we got you back. Right? Yeah, sorry. That. Sounds good. I appreciate your insight on that. Yeah, both of them looked incredible, and I do agree that uh, that Marlon definitely seemed composed. I mean, uh, Jose put a lot of pressure on him. I had, I, I, I personally did have Marlon edging that fight out, but it was pretty close, yeah. and I could under, I could understand the opposite. Uh, Dana White thought that that, that Aldo wanted end up, uh, but Marlon was fast. He was composed. I think he took less damage, and uh, and I think yeah. he really was, uh, you know, one of the better versions of himself that I've seen. So great division. But, man, you're an exciting division. Bantamweight, go ahead in the last minute we have you. Uh, remind us again when that fight is going to be and where. And uh, also uh, let us know how people can follow you and support you on social media. Yes, sir. February 8th, Houston, Texas. Um, you can follow me on my Instagram at MilesXJohns or on Facebook, Miles Johns. Most of my stuff is on my Instagram. Um, so, yeah, just appreciate the love. Thank you for having me on here. And, um Hopefully we talk again soon. Absolutely. I look forward to it. A pleasure chatting with you. Another fantastic fighter and person from Fortis MMA. Man, your team is awesome. Keep up the great work. Miles Johns, we'll be cheering for you. Yes, sir. Have a good one. You too.